king, Grandpa? Yes. Edward the V and two ones was Edward the Seventh. So Britain made ready for a coronation, a ceremony that at last happened so many years back that most people had forgotten how to crown the monarch. That was the coronation that began the era that the world now calls Edwardian. The new king is here seen walking behind the gun carriage. When King George and Queen Mary drove in state to St Paul's, there to give thanks to God for the achievements of a reign of 25 years. And what years they were of hope and despair, joys and sorrow, drama and crisis. had carried the burden of the responsibilities of the highest office in the land through a period which had witnessed the bitter years of war, 1914 to 1918, upheaval and crisis abroad, and the years of slump and gradual recovery at home and in our dominions and colonies. Edward R. I. As is usually upon the coronation of the kings and queens of this realm, solemnized in Westminster Abbey, shall take place. A Britain looking forward to the pomp and ceremony of a coronation. Planting coronation trees, making coronation mugs, stamps, and generally expressing its enthusiasm for the popular central figure of that coming coronation. For Britain had found herself faced by a constitutional dilemma unprecedented even in her long and eventful history. Here's an opinion from Lord Marley, Deputy Speaker of the House of Lords. The proposed marriage of King Edward and Mrs. Simpson has raised the constitutional question in Great Britain as to whether the marriage is a public or a private act. If it is a public act, the king must follow the advice of his ministers. And then, the problem of abdication... I have found it impossible to carry the heavy burden of responsibility and to discharge my duties as king as I would wish to do without the help and support of the woman I love. And now we all have a new king. I wish him and you, his people, happiness and prosperity with all my heart. God bless you all. God save the king. And now, for the first time in newsreel history, we show you the matchless royal pageantry in all the brilliance of its scintillating color. Only once or twice in the life of each one of us comes such a day as this. With slowness and dignity, the coronation coach moves forward, bringing with it, symbolized by our royal family, all the history and tradition of Britain and the Empire. Past Big Ben, past Westminster Hall and the Houses of Parliament, to the ancient Church of Westminster, which was first built in the days of Edward the Confessor, whose crown will, before another hour has passed, rest on the head of King George VI. The Archbishop of Canterbury takes it, raises it with solemnity, lowers it on the royal brow. The king is crowned. The peers acclaim their sovereign. Divested of her rich robes of state and jewels, the queen is clothed in a simple white robe. For now begins the anointing ceremony by which she is consecrated to be God's anointed servant. Her Majesty moves to King Edward's chair, over which a splendid canopy of silk and gold borne by four knights of the garter will be placed. Now Queen Elizabeth, crowned and anointed, goes to receive communion. I feel that uh, it is a very impressive ceremony. Um, I know perhaps some people would think that uh, it is rather anachronistic and out of place in, uh, in this world, which is perhaps uh, somewhat cynical. But um, I think it, it can mean quite a lot if, if one goes about it in the right way. I think it can... Uh, have some form of symbolism. Mm -hmm. 